Welcome to the Real Estate Raw Show, hosted by Joe Mendoza. Looking forward to getting to know you better, Tony. Hi guys, Joe Mendoza here in sunny San Diego. Welcome to my show. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and sharing the great words of wisdom. Today, ladies and gentlemen, coming from Utah, I'm super, super excited to have Mr. Brian Charlesworth on our show. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian, how are you? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. So I'm super excited to hear the transformation of your company, Sisu, kind of the backstory, how it all started. So why don't we take it back a little bit? Let's talk about uh, the little history prior to Sisu, your involvement in real estate, et cetera. Go okay, great. So I have a background going back many years where I have started a few tech companies and sold them. And uh, I then got into franchising and I used to own Housemaster Home Inspections at the franchisor level. And I tried to buy budget blinds together with a, a fund out of New York called Sentinel Partners and didn't end up making that deal happen. But what happened was they actually brought me in house to acquire businesses, partner with them and acquire businesses underneath their parent company that we formed. And we sold that about 18 months later. So uh, when that happened, which was about six years ago now, my wife had a small real estate team of five agents and she said, hey, while you're figuring out what you want to do next, come help me build my real estate business, you know? And my dad was in real estate. Uh, I never, never really thought I would be in real estate, but, uh, you know, I've always loved real estate, but, you know, like I love to look at homes. I love, you know, to buy properties or that kind of stuff, but never, never really thought, hey, I'm going to be in that business. But the more I looked at it, um, I said, yes, I'll come in for a year or two. And as I got in, I noticed that there are so many people in this industry just willing to share different things. And so, you know, I went to all kinds of mastermind events and got to meet a lot of great people. And what I found, though, was there was a, a huge hole uh, in the space that, that didn't cover what, what I was used to in most businesses, which, you know, how do you set up goals? How do you track and measure those goals? And how do you hold people accountable? And how do you um, you know, and, and do it effectively, right, without using spreadsheets. And so that's kind of where we started and gamifying things. I've always been huge on gamification. I love Strava. You know, I love, now I love Tonal. You know, those different things where you can actually compete against other people. Uh, I, I'm into that. I think it makes a huge difference on the business. So that's kind of where we started. And then when, um, when COVID hit last year, you know, we were just, we had had a lot of our customers ask us about transaction management and task management because they were using things in the industry that they didn't like. And, the, or they were having to go outside of the industry to uh, Monday.com or a Trello, which required them to put their data all over into a new system, which is, again, that's part of what we set out to solve was this duplicate data entry thing. And so, we ended up going that route and uh, now have pretty much everything you need to run your real estate business, except for a CRM or a lead generation, lead follow-up platform. And, uh, and we don't have any signature platform. So I say, except for a CRM, and I'm very cautious about that because if you look at the largest CRM in the world, it's Salesforce. Well, we really consider ourselves the Salesforce of real estate because we are the data store. We're that hub where you can visualize, gamify, view all your data. But we don't do the things that a CRM in real estate does, which is have your IDX website and do lead follow-up. That's incredible, Brian. Now, when you were working with your wife, were you a manager? Were you like CEO? Were you an agent? What was kind of your role uh, initially? Well, my role was to help her build her business. So she had five agents. And I think you guys can all relate to this being a young, you know, you start a team, which she had done like probably five years before that. And she was in that vicious cycle of, okay, I'm going to hire five agents. And then two or three of those are going to leave. So I'm going to start over again. And then two or three are going to leave and I'm going to start over again. And all of her business was buyers because she was generating leads and Nobody was really doing listings except for her. And so she really wanted me to solve her listing problem and, and help her, you know, so I, I had a coach and learned how to do listings. And, you know, I, 
I actually that and I, and I started training people on how to do listings. But as I was doing that, obviously, there were different numbers trackers in the industry, and I wanted to know what they all were and how to do that. And, you know, none of them were just effective. They were all spreadsheet based or or very, very basic. Um, and so that's kind of that's kind of how this got started. So we actually built an app to start and uh, all of her agents, all five, <laughs> doubled their business over about a six month period. They were doing twice the number of deals per year, per month. Uh, and so we're like, hey, we're onto something here. Let's, uh, let's actually build a platform that will do this. And that's how Stisi was born. That's great, Brian. Now you did point out something on your website or somebody from your staff that uh, whenever they use this kind of platform, chances are they're gonna increase their business about 30%. And I'm a firm believer of one of those that say, hey, whatever you monitor and measure, will improve kind of like the book the 4dx yeah. so um overall like throughout america i mean or the world how many users are actually using this platform so we have over twenty thousand users on the platform now and here's the interesting thing about that stat you just talked about um so we've actually now been around we, we just launched two years ago but long enough to know the results of somebody using our platform so an agent that's on our platform, if they come in their first year, they're going to, their business on average is going to increase 28%. If a team or brokerage comes into CSU on average, their business is going to increase 107%. So any business owner in real estate using our platform, their average is 107% increase year over year, which is amazing. I mean, we just, uh, we just barely looked that up because some of the strategic partners we're talking to wanted to know, you know, what is the result of really having sales performance? Now, what, to pinpoint it to maybe a little more specificity, do you think it's a gamifying component or what do you think it's the main driver of that statistic? So on, on the agent side, I would say it's positive accountability. Actually having goals, knowing what they are, we all know that we set goals on New Year's and by the 21st of January, if we didn't write it down, we forgot what it was. And if we measure it, we measure it once a month. And measuring something once a month, I can do 12 pivots a year, right? So if I'm overeating or bad diet or not exercising and I just look at it once a month, okay, maybe every month I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna correct that. But if I measure it every day, now I can correct it over 300 times a year, right? So. So that's, that's vital. I mean, we do it, if we do it in our personal lives, we should do it in our businesses. Most every other business in the world does that. Why don't people in real estate do that? So that's definitely a piece of it. And then the other side of it is really automating your business and simplifying it. Um, my wife used to have three transaction coordinators to do hundred transactions a year. She now does over 350 transactions a year with one transaction coordinator. So just having efficiencies and systems that will do and automate your, your company, which is, that's the backside of CSU. So we call ourselves growth automation software. Growth is all about focusing on sales, measuring your sales performance. Automation, all about the operational side of your business. That's awesome, Brian. Now, I know there's other platforms and software and Excel sheets out there that people are using why you guys versus anybody else? And I'm not going to throw any names out there, but why you guys? I, I think it's really a couple of things. Number one, you've got to have everything in a database, right? So if you are using spreadsheets, it's not the right solution for this business. Um, number two, you know, there are a lot of transaction management companies in the business, but do they visualize your data for you? Do you know how much money you're making? Do you know what your ROI is on your spend, on your lead sources? You know, do you have everything in one place and are you required to do duplicate entry? And I would say if you're not using CSU, you probably, you know, have four or five software companies in your business. And if you are using CSU, you're down to two or three. That's awesome. I love the simplification of that. Now, I saw your staff. You have a pretty incredible size staff. How many um, on your team, employees, or virtual altogether? Yeah, so we are up to about 25 employees now. Wow, congratulations. Now, how many people are actually like on the programming side? Uh, 11. That's awesome. 
Now, somebody who's considering creating an SaaS business and a software as a service business, because I do have some people that, you know, they get into real estate, they do the fix and flips, they're agents, and sometimes, you know, they're going into multifamily, then eventually they actually get into the software space. Any advice you would share with them if uh, they're considering getting into this kind of business? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, people in real estate have a lot of great ideas and it's all about, are you going to be able to execute on that idea? So, I mean, first of all, if you're going to start a business, you need to go all in. You can't just dip your toe in the water and say, I'm going to keep doing this and this. It's it's an all in thing. And then, um, you know, if you start, thankfully, I've started software companies before. Uh, but if you haven't done that, I mean, it's a whole different skill. And so... Just, you know, listen to a lot of things, be learning, growing. There's so many podcasts out there today. You guys listen to them about real estate, but listen to SaaS podcasts, right? Listen to uh, what these guys are doing, read books about SaaS, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And then probably the main thing I would say is hire your own developers in-house. Don't outsource it. That's a great tip. Somebody else shared that on the show a while back and, um, What's the reason? What's why? I mean, here's the thing. Like, our team is very, very passionate about solving this problem, about being the platform that changes real estate, right? Automating your business, growing your business. Uh, we think that we think the industry is changing. So we think probably half of the agents in the industry may not be in the industry in two years. And we think the ones that are going to be in the industry are the ones that run their business with our platform or use something similar, right? So they, they have to use business skills to stay in the game and they have to be able to make smart decisions to stay in the game. It's not like it used to be, you know, I mean, when think back 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, I mean, how many, how many teams were there? Not very many, if any, and how many people in real estate were actually responsible for selling 500 homes a year or a thousand homes a year there weren't it didn't exist but now it's just growing and getting more and more and more that way and are, are you doubling your business are you the one taking market share or is market share being taken from you great point brian now let's say you were coaching me or the audience and you've got this incredible salesperson which i run into all the time they're incredibly great listing agents, buyer agents, whatever. But where they're weak at is being a business person or what they need to improve on is actually being a business person. Kind of coach me as if I was this person, like I don't know anything about software. It kind of scares me. What would you say to me to try to like convince me this is a great idea to help me scale my business? Uh, are you a team owner or are you a solo agent? Okay, great question. So let's say I'm uh, an agent with an assistant. Okay. So, I mean, the question really is, do you, do you know where all of your business is coming from? Do you know how much you're spending on marketing? Do you hold yourself accountable? Do you have a coach that holds you accountable? And if you do, how are you reporting numbers out to your coach? Like, are you trying to remember on Sunday, if you coach on, if you meet with your coach on Monday, are you trying to remember on Sunday, how many contacts you made and filling out some piece of paper, right? Or, or is everything just there for your coach to look at anytime, all the time, so they can dive into your business with you and help you make those decisions. I mean, coaches are extremely valuable. All of the most successful people in the industry have a coach, but is their coach really able to give them the full benefit because they're able to look in and collaborate on that business? Great advice, Brian. And, and I agree with you because at one point when I wasn't really diving deep into the analytics, I don't think I was adding as much value as I am now. But now I guarantee that you I'm... weren't. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> but now as I'm really learning the analytics more and more, I mean, we're even talking QuickBooks and P&Ls, mm -hmm. balance sheets, schedule of real estate, and really kicking it up a notch. So, I mean, we turn them, you know, from great salespeople to great business people, then all of a sudden great investors. So yep. that's kind of- Yeah, the I mean, th that's really the thing. Like, Someone wanting to start a team, right? Let's say you have, you have an assistant. 
well, you're selling 50 homes a year and you're like, you know, I really want to start a team, but how are you going to attract people? Like what systems do you have that are going to help you be able to manage the people that are on your team? Is that, is that something you can do? And the, the fact is most people in that scenario, like you said, they're great salespeople, but they've never necessarily run a business before. So if you have a system in place that does everything you need it to do to run a business effectively, and let's just talk about the four disciplines of execution, right? Everything you read about in that book, which you mentioned, you can do in the CSU platform. It empowers you to do all of those things you need to do to be a great leader. And I think that's really what, what we do best, what our platform does best, is it turns great salespeople into great leaders. That's awesome, Brian. Now, are you looking to eventually like take this company public or is this too early to tell or none of my business? <laughs> What's going well, I mean, we, we just launched two years ago. We have uh, 20,000 agents on the platform today. And, you know, our goal, our next goal is to get to 100,000 uh, users on the platform. Let me specify that because up to this point, we've been focused on real estate agents. Well, as of, of about a week ago, we actually rolled out the ability for when you, I mean, we've really streamlined it so you can share all of your data when you go under contract with your mortgage company or your title company. But now rather than clicking a button and have it share all of that out to them, basically they will automatically get notified when you add them to a transaction and they can log in and access the data and collaborate with you. So that being said, uh, between real estate, mortgage, title, escrow, attorneys, uh, you know, our goal is to get to 100,000 agents or users in the next 12 months. And so that's, that's kind of where we're at. You know, it's just about growing and solving a problem and really changing the industry and making, there's been so many companies trying to disrupt the industry as far as agents go. And we're pro-agent. So we want to make it so the agents last forever and are as effective as they can possibly be. And so uh, anyway, that's our next milestone whether we go public or, or, or the company gets acquired at some point, uh, we see that being down the road and not something that we're certainly focused on at this point. Wow, that's incredible, Brian. Now that's a 5X leap, right? And I just came from the 10X growth conference with uh, Grant Cardone. What do you think would be like the biggest ingredient to jump 5X in 12 months? Well, there's so many things that fall into it, but one is what I just talked about, bringing additional users. So for every real estate team that's on our platform or every real estate brokerage, there should be multiple vendors in the platform now as well. So your, your preferred mortgage and title company should absolutely be in our platform to collaborate with you if you want to get the full benefit out of it. And I think everybody knows, like if you've been to any masterminds, if you've been around any visionary in this industry, you know that that is key, that collaboration. So that's, that's a big piece of it. And in addition to that, we, um, you know, we're now, we've been around for a couple of years and we haven't really done any marketing other than a slight little spend on Facebook. Most of our, most of our growth is really from referrals from our customers. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's opportunity because the industry I think is now seeing that the industry needs what we have and so there's opportunity through a lot of strategic growth. Um, right now, 100% of our business, for instance, is just small business, right? It's SMB. If you know SaaS, it's SMB. So we don't really have any enterprise customers today. So there's a, a, lot, there's a lot of opportunity with enterprise customers or, for instance, partnering with Tom Ferry and getting in the, uh, you know, in the hub which we're not in the hub today. So that's, that's one of our goals for this year. So just as an example. That's awesome, Brian. What, what do you think are some of your key ingredients to your personal success? Is it books you read, people you associate with? What are some of like the things that caused you or helped you create some success? I think for me, I've always just been, I've always felt like I can change the world. Like there's something in me that feels like I am here to do something for the world. And so, you know, um, geez, my first software company was a voice internet company back in the year 2000. So uh, we were a little bit ahead of our time. We did get acquired, but um, like if you look at what Siri and Alexa are doing today and Google, 
it's voice internet, right? So, so anyway, um, you know, that, and I think Brit, like for me, if you're going to be an, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you are going to get slapped in the face. You're going to fall down a lot. And it's about how you get up. And, you know, do you look at it as a sport? For me, it's a sport. It's something fun. It's competing. I enjoy the daily grind. I enjoy the process. And if you don't, like you're probably not cut out to be an entrepreneur because it's not easy, right? Or everyone would do it. Um, and so it's really easy to just to quit, to give up, right? I mean, trust me, I've run into a lot of challenges at Sisu, but you know, it, we formed a company four years ago. We launched two years ago in January of 19. So those first two years, like, do you have it in you to get through that? And then when you first launch, when everybody tells you they don't need it or everyone's tried it or they're doing it in a spreadsheet, you know, are you going to get, is that going to persuade you that this, this isn't a necessary thing? Or do you have the passion and the vision to see really how you can change an industry? That's awesome, Brian. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Anything you're promoting, best way to get a hold of you, anything like that? Yeah, I would say, you know, if you want to learn more, just go to sisu.co. That's S-I-S-U dot C-O and sign up for a free seven day trial and just play around with it and see, see what we do. Learn from our sales team what we do. And, and I, I think you'll fall in love with it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Brian, for being on the show and we wish you well. All right. Thanks, Joe. Wow, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I hope you learned as much as I did or more. So guys, look at the comment thread. If you've seen something or heard something, want to learn more about something, please put it on the comment link below. If you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that bell to hear the latest and greatest on the show. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. I'm putting this channel together to hopefully add incredible value to you. And if you want to learn more about investing, you're new to investing, I highly recommend this book, Flex with a Plex. Also this book, if you're having some challenges, as you can see, everybody on the show had some kind of adversity, including yours truly. So I shared a lot of that on make it a comeback, giving you some incredible tips to make a comeback. So get either one, Plex with a Plex, or make it a comeback. If you want to get more tips, go ahead and go to JoeMendoza.com. Again, subscribe, share, like, make a comment below. I really, really appreciate you. Want to add incredible value and wish you all the best in your success in real estate and in life. Take care. Our company is not responsible for the success or failure of your business decisions relating to any information presented by our company or our company programs, products, and or services.